Well, thanks so much for joining on your Friday afternoon. I know it's been a jam-packed three days of the conference and the end of the week. Um, so I'm really excited to have your attention as we talk about what it means to implement the SDGs at a local level, um, specifically today looking at the enterprise level. Um, before I get into it, I of course need to acknowledge that I am joining you from downtown Toronto. Let me try to. Yes, I'm joining you from downtown Toronto, um, the place in the water where the trees are standing, as the original meaning of Takaranto. Uh, the home, uh, the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Huron Wendat, the Chippewa, and the Anishinaabe Nations. And it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Metis, and Inuit people from across Turtle Island. Um, I'm joining you via my own homeland of Trinidad and Tobago, which is the traditional land of the Warao and the Kalanago peoples after my own indigenous ancestors were forcibly removed from their traditional homelands in the African continent um, to work on the stolen lands on this side of the world called the Americas now. And, you know, something that I really love about the SDGs is part of this reckoning with bringing together all of our different social, environmental, and economic issues, um, understanding that they're all intertwined and interconnected, and it's not just one technical solution here and there, that we have some really systemic um, stuff to work on. So who the heck am I? Hi, my name is Alicia Richens, and I am a sustainable development strategist and personally a fierce advocate of the SDGs. I work with impact-driven organizations and communities who are seeking to align local priorities to the global goal so that they can embed, improve, and amplify their impact toward a future that is environmentally sustainable, economically prosperous, just, inclusive, and equitable so that we leave no one behind. You may have heard me mention my Caribbean upbringing on Wednesday, and I just mentioned it again. Um, but I've been pretty steeped in global citizenship from a young age, curious about how we could equalize the playing field of options and opportunities for people from all different backgrounds. From And then from my own studies in undergraduate in college of economics and social science to my graduate studies in environmental studies and ecological economics, I've walked down a road of enriching work with international organizations, not-for-profits, and social enterprises who all struggled at some point or another to take action on these global goals that finally merge all of our issues together. So I got my research and engagement hats on and started consulting to help folks localize. And luckily, just over a year ago, the UNDP launched these impact standards for enterprises that help to codify and bring together efforts for SDG implementation. You know, we have this wonderful global agenda for all of the different countries of the world and all of our different nation states, but it's been a bit of a journey getting toward organizational implementation. How do we make sense of these global goals and targets and how do we embed them into the organization? And that's pretty much what I love to do with different organizations. Today, we're going to be getting into um, why to align. Hopefully, I don't have to sell you too much on that. We're, you're at this conference this week because you care about the SDGs. Um, we're going to go over how to align to the, the standards um, in question specifically, um, a special note on what it looks like, what impact measurement looks like along the SDGs. Of course, as always, we need to talk about truth and reconciliation, and then some next steps. So first of all, why bother? There are many reasons to align with the SDGs, um, from regulations that are incoming to demand from customers, stakeholders, suppliers, to funding and investment opportunities. Um, companies can use the SDGs as an overarching framework to shape, steer, and communicate their strategies, their goals, their activities to capitalize on a range of benefits. Um, from the demand side, um, one Deloitte poll showed that 47% of customers believe the goal of business should be to improve society. And that was back in 2019. I'm sure things are even higher now. Um, a more recent um, study uh, published by the Delphi Group showed that 71% of employees prefer working with environmentally sustainable and socially impactful companies. And the SDGs are all about bringing together 
that those spheres of work into organizations. On the more financial business case, um, the, UN, the UN World Business Council on Sustainable Development reports that there's a 12 trillion US dollar opportunity by 2030, as well as 380 million jobs. And there are all sorts of other benefits. Um, like I mentioned, you know, getting ahead of regulations. Right now, it's a very voluntary process. But as we see the field of ESG grow and impact measurement, and those things are very related, in my view, to the work of sustainable development goals, we're going to start to see a lot of these different pieces of the SDGs become required um, by governments and by regulatory bodies. One of the benefits that I personally love to highlight is the common language and shared purpose. If we're not using this shared language, it, it becomes very hard to collaborate, to understand from the local to the regional to the national levels what our progress is looking like and, and what these baselines are if we're not using the same framing. So the SDGs bring us together in this one shared language from our diversity um, to implement towards the sustainable future that we all would like. And so getting into the standard itself, it's actually a group of standards, 12 standards in all, and they're grouped by these four themes, um, looking at your strategy, looking at your management approach, looking at your transparency, and looking at your governance. And they're provided to organizations as a best practice for operating more sustainably and optimizing contribution to sustainable development. And so this is a graphic that highlights all 12 of the steps, and I'm going to go through each of them um, by category. So first up in this realm of strategy, what we're looking for here is that the enterprise or the organization, if you're a not-for-profit, embeds contributing positively to sustainable development and the SDGs into its purpose and strategy and sets ambitious impact goals. So first, we're starting with committing. You're going to commit to operate responsibly and sustainably, contributing positively to the SDGs and optimizing your overall impact. Second is understanding. What's important to your stakeholders? What's important to the achievement of the SDGs? Where is your organization making impact to determine, so that to help you determine where material impact in the future can be made? And you know, today's session is a really good first step of understanding what's possible. Um, and then perhaps your homework will be to go back to your stakeholders and get a sense of what's important to them. Next is integrating. We want to integrate sustainability and the SDGs into purpose and strategy. Fourth is setting specific goals. Um, this is an exercise I love getting into where we take the, 12, the 17 SDG goals and we take your own organizational purpose statement, your mission statement, and your own desired impact in the world to come towards a framing of the goals that aligns um, with the global language and adjust. As you, as you set goals, as you work towards implementation of goals, as you get more information, you're going to adjust your strategy as needed to optimize your impact. And so I know, or I'm hoping that everyone is familiar with the 17 SDGs. Um, there's a reflection activity, but I'm hoping that maybe, you know, you don't need too much warming up. It's Friday afternoon. Feel free to unmute yourself and shout it out. You know, if anybody wants to share their reflections of, what is your organizational purpose and what SDGs align best with that purpose? Have you ever had to think about that? All right, I'll leave it for reflection this time. So getting into the next category, we're looking at the management approach. Here, we're saying that the enterprise integrates impact measurement and management to optimize their contribution to sustainable development and the SDGs. So Candace is sharing that the SDGs are embedded in most provincial curriculum documents. That is fantastic. So from the educational and academic institution side of things that we have these goals embedded in curriculum. Is there any difference between how that translates from the provincial level down to the actual individual institutions?
and but either way you know it's just really helpful to have that framing that shared understanding of the goal so that then you can implement it and implement this framework um, from that starting point keep your questions coming in the chat and i'll get to them and feel free to interrupt me as well i'm going to get back to the management approach here so the first step in um, the management approach or rather the first standard is aligning so we talked about your overall strategy and goals. Now we're going to talk about how you manage your organization. What is your org culture and structure? What are the skills you use? How do, how do those things align with that goal, that overall purpose that you identified? Secondly is developing. So here we're talking about developing that impact measurement and management framework. And I have this big pink asterisk there because we're going to come back to that later. Eighth is integrating your impact measurement and management into your management systems and decision making. How is the data you're collecting from your ongoing impact measurement influencing the decisions that your leaders in your organization is making from day to day and week to week and month to month? And then how are we embedding that continuous improvement? So Candace is sharing that education is connected to ministries of education in all Canadian provinces, and that's great. And my prompt to you and everybody else is thinking about how does the culture and structure inside of your individual organization align with that original purpose or goals? So in the educational context, we're talking about schools, individual schools. How does the work in your individual school align with the provincially mandated curriculum. Where is there room for improvement or transformation? What are some of the you know, structural challenges you might be having in implementing those goals? The third category is transparency. So here the enterprise discloses how it integrates contributing positively to sustainable development and the SDGs into its purpose, strategy, management approach, and governance, and reports at least annually on this performance. Oh yes, I know that funding is always a challenge and we can chat about that in a second. So under transparency, there's really only one standard and that's all about disclosure. How are you disclosing your sustainability and your SDG specific impact? How is that um, continuous disclosure and reporting integrated into your decision making? So I'm assuming, well, actually that's not a good assumption. Many organizations, not all, might already be preparing different kinds of impact reports. Um, how are you disclosing the impact against the original purpose, against the SDG framework from year to year? How does even the format of, the, of your impact report actually engage the stakeholders you're trying to meet? So for instance, you know, in the educational context, sorry if I'm overusing you, Candice, because you're the most active in the chat, but from the educational context, you know, if a school was to put together an impact report, your primary stakeholders would likely be the students and their parents who are unlikely to want to read some 20 to 50 long page bureaucratic document. How are you sharing your impact in ways that actually connects to your desired audience? And what standards are you reporting along? So how are you sharing how that impact ties to the SDGs? Or if you're a business trying to become a B corporation, how are you sharing how that ties to your journey to becoming um, certified as a B Corp? and the other different frameworks that exist out there. Finally, we have governance. Here, the enterprise's commitment to contributing positively to sustainable development and the SDGs is reinforced through its governance practice. So now we're talking about the leadership structures, right? How does, how does the integration of sustainability come into your governance framework, come into performance management? How does your governing body lead by example? What sorts of organizations do the people on your board represent? What sorts of values um, 
do they exhibit on a day-to-day -day basis? How bought in is your org's leadership into this plan to align with the SDGs? How can that impact of the the impact that you're trying to seek in the organization weigh into performance? Whose job is it to make sure this gets done? And how do you embed the idea of social and environmental issues to show up in your financial, strategic, and operational goals as well, and not just kind of shelf this as its own little separate thing that gets done and stays on a shelf to collect dust for the rest of the year? So now I'm going to get into the impact measurement and management side of things. Um, and this is the framing. There are many different frameworks for impact measurement from, you know, my former, the place I used to work at, Common Approach to Impact Measurement, has common foundations um, to Social Value International's framework. There are many different frameworks. But what's key to understand is that all of them are essentially saying the same thing. This framework is coming directly from the UNDP as well. Um, and it comes with these four steps setting strategy, integrating, optimizing, and reinforcing. So strategizing is very similar to what we talked about with the strategy um, category of the impact standards, um, but we're getting a little deeper into the strategy setting principles. So here we want to make sure that we have a baseline assessment. What is your organization's impact to date? Um, benchmarking, who are other similar organizations in the ecosystem that you can Try to compare your and measure your impact against. Stakeholder engagement, like we talked about. How are you engaging your community, your customers, your students, your clients into your process of even setting goals in the first place? How do you know what's really important to them? If the impacts you're trying to achieve don't even matter to the people you're trying to support, then we're choosing the wrong goals. A double materiality assessment um, takes that one step further in thinking about not just how your organization creates impact to external factors, but how external factors are impacting your organization as well. This helps us get to principled prioritization. Now that we know what's important to our stakeholders, that includes our own staff, that includes our own teams, um, we can prioritize because obviously we're not trying to report on all 17 goals within a single organization. That's, that is not, <laughs> not realistic or impactful. And what is that impact thesis? How do you know what is the plan um, for getting from A to B in terms of the impact you're trying to make in the world? Second is integration. So starting with the data for decision making mindset, we want to look at the, the indicators you need to collect. So what kind of information do you need to assess in order to know that you've made progress on the goals? And then you can create indicators based on that to measure against. And then you set up systems for regular data collection. Um, I put down there whose job is it because we want to make sure that it's happening regularly. You can't just survey participants once every five years um, and think that you're really going to get the data you need to understand the impact you're trying to make. Optimization. Here, we're looking at the analysis of that data. What methods of analysis? How often are you um, analyzing that? Um, what do the results lead to in your analysis? Um, hopefully, you know, this is not just about the reporting and the funding piece that Candace mentioned that we'll get to in a second, but Understanding how the, the insights gleaned from your analysis can inform and improve your organizational operations. So we learned that we have this negative impact in this sphere, and so we need to improve this service or do something here differently. We learned that we've had great impact in this other sphere, so actually let's throw some more resources there to, to magnify and amplify that impact. And finally is the reinforcement. So like I mentioned before, integrating sustainability and the social impact into your financial, strategic, and operating goals. Um, how, does fact, how does this impact factor into performance? How are we reporting and sharing to stakeholders and allowing ourselves to be held accountable um, to the things we set out to do? 
And finally, before I open up the floor for questions, um, we really need to be always keeping front of mind our work towards truth and reconciliation as we frame it here in Canada, um, and more globally looking at the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. So beyond just putting together an organizational specific, you know, land acknowledgement, dive into them, you know, what are those calls to action, which ones are appropriate for your organization or enterprise. Um, typically, I would read off, you know, call to action number 92 that's specifically focused on businesses, but I also take heart what we learned on Wednesday morning from Danica Littlechild that actually that's not enough. We need to make sure that we are reading the entire document and understanding how we place ourselves as organizations into these work because they're really not that long of documents to read in the first place. Um, so I challenge, I, I not challenge, I invite everyone to really make sure we're reading the documents, understanding it, and making sure that we're tying in the needs and desires of Indigenous peoples, the, the continuous engagement and consultation with Indigenous peoples, and making sure that our organizations are part of the work towards reconciliation and not just existing despite it. Okay, I've been talking a lot for a while, so I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everyone's faces and open the floor for questions. So Candice mentioned the challenge of um, funding for activities. Um, that's definitely often a challenge that I see. In fact, you know, some of my first clients came to me because they were just like, Alicia, the government's asking me to report on these SDG things. Like, how do I do that? Um, and so funding tends to be this kind of um, directive that gets people into the impact measurement space and reporting. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're doing the impact measurement in a way that supports, you know, organizational learning while still giving funders all the information that they need. Hi, Miranda and Leslie. Hi, Alicia. Yeah. I do have a question after Amanda, I guess. Okay, I could go. Um, so, well, first of all, um, I wanted to ask you if you think the SDGs are a good starting point for an organization that does not have any kind of sustain sustainability um, policies or structure or, you know, just to get an organization started, do you think SDGs is a good place to start? Or would you start with a materiality matrix? Or would you do both at the same time? Yeah, I'd probably do both at the same time. You know, I think what's really beneficial about the SDGs, especially if you're not coming from a sustainability space, you know, the beauty of the SDGs is that there are all these other things. So there, there's likely some goals that you are, you know, already in um, feeling that connection to. And the materiality mm -hmm. assessment at the same time helps us prioritize, prioritize across the SDGs without any kind of bias by telling ourselves what those what those categories should be. We mm -hmm. have the whole thing and then we can do the materiality assessment at the same time. And I think that really helps sometimes brings up some surprising results when people think, oh yeah, like I know which five SDGs I'm working toward. And then your materiality assessment is just like, well, actually there are these other two that you ignored um, that folks care more about. Yeah. Um, and I was going to ask you about regulations. So are there regulations that are coming or are already here that require SDGs to be identified? Um, not yet. Um, what's happening on the regulation side of things is more about the impact measurement and reporting specifically. So the SDGs are just kind of like one framework that folks can use. Um, and regulation definitely is more so on the corporate side of things. So publicly traded companies have, you know, higher standards as they should um, to pass to make sure that they're, you know, making the world not a horrible place. Um, but what we will see is, is, you know, the governments and different governments highlighting their different priorities. And those include funding priorities that, you know, hopefully nudges different sectors um, towards SDG implementation. So there's definitely, you know, the SDG funding unit and the SDG office of the government of Canada who puts out grants, um, even looking at stuff like the social finance fund and the investment readiness program 
you know, at this time, it's very little more than a checkbox, but it's hopefully they start for asking for more data and so that we can all understand um, that SDG progress a bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how many SDGs do you recommend for a business that's now getting started with sustainability? I mean, that's hard to say without getting into the specifics, you know, like if you're a brand new business now starting, like you probably like, even when it comes to impact measurement, you probably don't need more than like four to five indicators. And so if you're measuring four to five indicators, how many SDGs can you really cover then? Maybe three? Um, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Leslie. So I understand that this session is focused more around business, but I currently work in local government governance. I work for Amazing. a small, I am, am a counselor at a small municipality in British Columbia. And I, but I do have a corporate background. So it's interesting to me when you talk about stakeholder engagement, because I don't know that if I don't feel that um, municipalities, in particular, smaller municipalities, engage with their stakeholders, so the residents, in a in what I would call a, a current way. So a lot of the ways that we communicate are ways that we used 10, 15, 20 years ago, which makes it challenging. And I know that the wonderful staff we have feels that they're sending out all the information. But if people aren't engaging with it, then even though you're doing the work, it's hard to get that buy-in. So I guess my question after all of that is, do you have any great examples of whether they're corporate organizations, government organizations who are uh, communicating in a really, um, you know, clear and impactful way? Absolutely. I love that you bring that up. In fact, Kelowna, BC had published one of the country's first voluntary local reviews. And so the voluntary local reviews are a process by which municipalities who have, you know, they're like, oh, my province or my federal government is not doing enough here. I want to take um, this under my own wing immediately. And there's a lot that's happening in terms of what would start off as participatory research, like you're saying, getting into the citizenry and asking people what exactly is important to them and merging that into what's traditionally been like the economic development process. Mm -hmm. um, I think the SDGs are really great at broadening that lens and again, connecting to the global language. Um, and so, yeah, Kelowna, BC, Winnipeg has a great um, platform, MyPeg, Peterborough is doing great work in that realm as well. And I will try to pull up links while also paying attention to the rest of the group, but I'll put those down or maybe chat with you after. Absolutely. Thank you. I can take a look at those ones. That'll get me started. Yeah. Um, if I could just join into this. So Leslie, I'm in Orangeville, Ontario, and our town did a sustainable neighborhood action plan recently, and it is tied to the SDGs. And there was a lot of community engagement and uh, many like in-person um, town hall type meetings. There's also something called bang, bang the table. Um, and it is a community engagement platform that I know some municipalities are using as well. Ban the table? Around? Ban, B-A-N-G. Ban oh, the, the table, got to thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's a digital engagement platform for governments to use. Okay. Did you find, is that something that Orangeville used? And did you find that a digital engagement platform? Um, was I don't think Orangeville it? used it. I think it was one of the other municipalities or maybe it was Dufferin County, but I know it's been used by some small uh, communities and I think they did get pretty good engagement from it. I've seen it in a few different um, towns using it. Okay. I just find with digital engagement, there are sectors of our uh, community that we miss. Mm. People that don't have access, you know, that I think we found that during the pandemic, there's a lot of people we assumed had access and they don't. Yeah. Yeah. But thank yeah, you. That's definitely a challenge, especially in this very large country that we live in of getting that digital connection and access to everyone. Um, yeah. London is also doing great work and Waterloo. Over to you, Diego. I think you're muted still, we can't hear you.
Hello, can you hear me? Hi, yeah. Ah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Alicia, for your talking. For me, it's very interesting because it's a big problem when the uh, private and public sectors identify the uh, impact uh, the, the SDG in this organization is, well, I think is, is a, a good way for, for this. But my question is, what kind of enterprises use these uh, sustainability uh, strategies? I mean, all kinds. Um, all kinds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you go into UN Global Compact, I think is a great resource because they're kind of like the business arm of the UN system. And they have different repositories where you can find your own benchmarking data according to different sectors and industries where people are reporting on the SDGs in different ways <laughs> to different extents. Ah, um, got it. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, my other question uh, is what what kind of indicators use these uh, enterprises? Are they KPAs or, or similar to the KPAs? Yeah, KPIs are one example. You know, that's just a different word for the same thing. Um, just kind of getting into what's possible. So what um, UN Global Compact and the World Business Council on Sustainable Development have great um, repositories of different indicators that other corporations are using. Um, when I work with, you know, smaller social enterprise clients, those tend to be way <laughs> above the head and not really too relevant. And so when it comes to indicator development, that's something that can be done in a really customized fashion um, while still making sure that we're doing enough of the technical connections to the actual, you know, not just the spirit, but mm -hmm. the desired data outputs from the original SDG indicator. Yeah, this is a, my other question related for, for this because it's hard to convert the global indicator provincial indicator to local or enterprise indicator, right? Yes, my dream for 2030, when we start to think about what the next framework will be, first of all, I hope that we merge the, SC the SDGs with the Paris Climate Agreement, because we're not going to even get forward on our climate action goals if we're not taking into account all of these other issues. Um, but also that we have indicator frameworks ready from the get-go for organizations and communities at the local level to seek their teeth into. Because like I mentioned, the UNDP just launched these standards like barely two years ago. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, we're already halfway at the halfway point now. And so a lot of people have just been kind of ratcheting it up because they haven't, there hasn't really been much support um, to really figure that out. Unless you have the resources to hire consultants or bring in people on your team to do that work. Um, and so now we have a bit more guidance, you know, as you can see in the standards, the guidance is still very high level and focused on that process of impact measurement and that reflective process. So it's still a bit of, you know, finagling things together um, <laughs> and really, but, but being honest and being explicit and being open and transparent about how you've done that and showing how you make your linkages from your own organizational indicators to the global indicators mm -hmm. I think is the best first step as we figure out how to kind of um, get everything else properly connected. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Diego. And yes, Candice, the, the challenge for, you know, rural communities, particularly northern communities in terms of digital access is definitely a big one, you know. Um, I know that there's been a lot of um, innovative work happening around radio communications, but finding ways to connect to folks and come down to the community level really takes time and takes intention, which takes resources. Um, and so balancing the speed of trust with the speed of change needed um, is really the, the, the task ahead of all of us. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, Dennis, Dale, Autumn, Matt. I 
I'm curious to learn about, oh, my pleasure, Candice. I'm curious to learn about the different organizations you're working in. So like I know Candice is coming from an educational background. Leslie's coming from government. Um, Miranda, I'm familiar with your work at the Art of Storytelling. Um, what kind of organization are you working with, Diego? Well, in Mexico, I was working in, in a consulting enterprise. Oh, cool. And did you see any implementation of the SDGs just yet? Or was it just kind of like something people heard about, but didn't really spend time diving into? Well, uh, in Mexico, um, in the <clears throat> enterprise and no private and public sectors, right now it's only identified, but some companies and some governments try to implement and tracking the SDG. But the big problem right now is how, because the global indicators is not the same for the enterprises, government, NGOs, uh, academic, and, and everything. We need to translate or convert, transform uh, these global indicators to local indicators. So, but it's a great job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. sounds like the same challenge we're having up here in Canada. Mm. <laughs> you know, we have the federal sustainable development strategy and some indicators there that that's great. Um, I'm looking forward to looking at, at Canada's voluntary national review this summer, actually next month <laughs> at this rate. Um, but yeah, just really being able to translate what the national government can take from the global framework and how that gets disseminated, but also built up from the bottom up um, in terms of the progress and the indicators and the data specifically um, yeah. is really the challenge while still pushing people to more transformational action. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, I just had one little slide and a closing spiel I can get to. <laughs> So I'm hoping that the session has helped you to understand and know to a certain extent how to implement the standards and the SDGs by extension from you know, strategy alignment to the baseline assessment to impact measurement and management systems for your organizational operations. What really excites me is connecting these different issues that the SDGs highlight and the different spheres of work from organization to organization and whole communities um, Leslie would love to chat about helping um, your municipality um, and then eventually rolling that back up to the global goals. Um, I also support municipalities and community organizations who are looking to get to SDG alignment across their network, tapping into the interests and issues most prominent to communities, to residents, um, and connecting that back up to the global agenda with real data and strategies for bridging gaps and adding to Canada's growing roster of voluntary local reviews. I'd be happy to share today's slide deck if it's helpful for anyone who'd like it. So just please send me an email and I will happily send that over. And happy to hop on, you know, this discovery calls to see what uh, the challenges you're facing are um, and see how I might be able to help you or anything else you want to chat about. Uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. I'm trying to post more often there and on Twitter. <laughs> So thanks so much from everyone for joining. I'll stick around for a few minutes if there are any, you know, closing questions. Um, but I am happy to leave you to your weekends. Please have a great one and stay healthy and safe out there. Thank you, Alicia, for your time and your talking. Thank you. Thanks, Alicia. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Yeah. Do you have any experience with agriculture, industry, and SDGs? I don't have direct experience with agricultural organizations per se. Um, in my last uh, day job role, I did do some work with um, uh, the 10C shared space and they had members who are agricultural. So I have, I have some sense of the kinds of indicators and impact measurement challenges of that specific sector, um, but I have not worked directly, but I'd be happy to chat some more. Yeah, okay. Because I was I'm working with um a, an Ontario company that is in agriculture and 
we kind of started at the back and now they're moving forward. So they wanted, they kind of started with their reporting and uh, transparency, but um, um, I don't want to say in a greenwashing way, but they do great things. They really do great things. And they wanted to um, use that in their communications and their marketing, which yes, it's great. But um, so they hired me to do that. And then because I have a sustainability background, I, I ask them these questions about, okay, how are you actually um, embedding this into your organization? We can't just start at the end and say that we're a sustainable business. So I'm trying to get them to move back to the beginning, mm -hmm. start at the beginning. And then, you know, as you work through it, you will have better material and you'll have something to use every year. And you can make a sustainability report because right now you can't if you're not measuring anything. And you're not basing it on any goals. Um, so that's that's kind of where I am with them. But I mean, it's it's a group. Is, it, is it a farm or is this a it's it's a group farm? of it's a group of farms. So yeah. it's kind of you know your typical um, midlife or older third generation farmer. They know all about farming. They are doing. They are making big strides. Like I can Absolutely. see. Absolutely. I, I mean, you inher you inherently have to cooperate with the earth <laughs> to be Obviously, successful right? at farming. So it's really the, just about translating like the thinking to what they're already doing. Yes. But what I'm trying to do is get them to see that if they can do their sustainability properly from the beginning, mm -hmm. um, you know, start from the beginning, then when they want to make a presentation to law laws or um, you know Metro or Sobeys or whatever, then they actually have some tangible evidence and they have some reports and they have some metrics and they have some data. But right now they're just kind of sticking at the end and saying, we yeah. do these great things, but they're not doing it all the way. And so I'm just wondering, like, is it going to happen at some point where the the metrics have to be there? The reporting has to be there. Like, is it going to be regulatory or is it going to be something in the supply chain where, um, you know, their buyers are going to say, you have to show us and prove to us that you have this data. Um, yeah, I think the most impactful thing will be, you know, their buyers asking for it and, and mm -hmm. seeing that demand, because at the end of the day, like you said, you know, if you're not diving into the data and coming at it from, you know, this the deep strategy perspective, it really is just marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we're trying to actually look at impact, it requires us to not just be able to, you know, wave a banner whenever there's something good we have to talk about. It's about understanding what was the goal? What are the gaps? And where might we not be doing so great? And mm -hmm. sharing instead what we're doing to improve on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'd be happy to take that offline. The tech team is messaging me that we have to close up the room very oh, soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank so, you so yeah, much. Let's keep in touch. And Diego, we can chat too. I'll, I'll find you on LinkedIn. <laughs> or email me. <laughs>